Hi guys, I'm Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, and Mark Zickery of Space Command, and I'm continuing the Space Command convention. Today we're interviewing David Bartlett. And uh, David, you're, uh, let's see if I can see you in the frame there. We see, I, I see you, though you're small here, there's probably a way to do this better. Yeah, there we go. Now I've got it. So, um, so David, those uh, who are uh, astute have seen you in two episodes of Space Command now. You play uh, Forey Hubbard and you uh, ask a question of Bill Mumy in Redemption and then you uh, respond, you, you put in, let's say, a, a customer complaint in Ripple Effect. So, so, um, so do you want to talk about how you first got involved in Space Command, how this all began and what your journey has been so far? Sure, sure. I've been a table member since like 25 years or something. Hmm. Whatever year that is, back when it was at IHOP, for those of you who remember that along. Yeah, that's great. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> I've been gone for a while, and a friend of mine, Greg Jackson, said that there was uh, Mark and Elaine Zickery, and I'm like, oh, the table people, right? Yeah, they were doing this seminar on how they had raised $221,000 on Kickstarter and 75 grand in three days and all this. I'm like, well, that's fascinating because I wanted to do my own projects. Mm -hmm. But Kickstarter, which at the time was not doing um, you know, uh, films of a narrative nature, like features, mm -hmm. and no one had done a TV show, um, <laughs> even though it was promoted as a feature, they had yeah. done that. So I right, said, well, right. that'd be worthwhile. So I spent the money and came to the, uh, to the event, and it was extremely interesting and oh, good. very informative. Mm -hmm. uh, David Raikland did a lot of the talking. <laughs> it was very, uh, uh, um, you know, skilled and filled with information and confident. And it was clear that he had had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark, of course, being the showrunner, as, as it were, uh, of what was a set of feature films mm -hmm. um, set up at the time. I thought this was really great information. I sort of started to go back to the table. Mm -hmm. And that led to, you know, helping around the edges and the market lane meeting websites. So I gave them websites one day because I've done a lot of websites and that got other conversations started. And long story short, one thing led to another. And now I'm like running all of the physical production and building a studio and running all the fulfillment and everything else that the yeah. very Kickstarter campaign I did a seminar for. <laughs> right. And you, uh, and it's, it's funny because you wear a lot of hats on Space Command to say the I least. Do. And, and you've even worked on, on the Twilight Zone Companion, the new edition, cleaning up the yep. photographs and scanning them and all that stuff. So we did, uh, 300 restorations of the Twilight Zone Companion that are really fun and some of them never before seeing like the, what's the episode with the people with the horrible face, the pig faces? Oh, that's, uh, the, well, the, the masks, that one, or Eye of the Beholder? Eye of the Beholder. Eye of the Beholder, yeah. Eye of the Beholder color backstage photos of, of tests of the makeup for that. And it's even creepier in color, if you can yeah. believe it. It was great. So, it was great. Yeah. So cool. So, so now, as you mentioned, you are working on Space Command, both in front of and behind the camera. And uh, so, you know, there's a, uh, there, and, and for those who want the signed photo of you with your two co-stars from, uh, from yep. Ripple Effect, that definitely will be something we'll be offering. Definitely do that, definitely. Yeah. Yes, and uh, the trick we'll be getting them to sign it, of course. But you know, we'll we'll work. With, uh, <laughs> That's a good idea. We should get yeah. a little operant. Yeah, like electric shocks, whatever. We can we can make that happen. No, so, no. Sure. but um, but so yeah, so now of course your your background, as I know, is you worked extensively in a lot of different capacities in film uh, over the last several decades. A lot of of sound for big features. Uh, you know, movies like Speed and Tremors and so forth. And, but also you worked with James Cameron building sets uh, for, with Roger Corman. So, so it's, uh, you know, you've had, you've really get, gotten to see how, how this machine works. And yeah, uh, I actually have here, this is the film I did with Jim. His name was huh. Jim. Then. Yeah. And it was, this is not the artwork that is either from the film or released for the film, but it's the one that's released for the DVD in the blue. Right. <laughs> and there is a story behind half of that artwork with the girl. You have to yeah. see the girl to get it. But <laughs> this is a Galaxy of Terror production designer Jim Cameron, and I was a set carpenter. <laughs> and then we have also I did two more films back to back. There I did this film with Alan Holtzman <laughs> called Forbidden World. Wow, which was shot the the promo of this. Roger had this really great way of making films. He had. Many talented people, and, and maybe not necessarily talented people, many people that want to break into the film business, yes. and work them for no money, and he would get them right at the beginning of their careers. People like Ron Howard and Martin Scorsese and, and Jack Nicholson, and there's so many hundreds that have come out of that world. And Jim was one of them, and his fiance at the time, Gail Ann Hurd, who was working <laughs> on a little film called Georgia Peaches, a little car chase movie. And she was associate producer of that film. 
And, and these two, you could tell these two were just off to the races. They were just a great couple and a great powerful team. <laughs> um, so what he would do is he would stick us all in the same environment, which was you have no money and you have to do it anyway. And we all had dreams of doing the great ILM films and the great Steven Spielberg films and all those films <laughs> and, uh, and had no money to do it. So we were all on the same playing field. <laughs> so he bought uh, a lumber yard, which was a brilliant move. Yeah, he bought this lumber yard, and he, it was called the Hammond Lumber Yard. He didn't rename it. It already had a gate. It already had walls for security. It already had a steam dock area. It already had lumber. It already had a shop. It had offices. It had large warehouse spaces. He turned into sound stages, sort of sound stages. Wow. And this is where we built the sets. So he would do two or three films in the same sets and just repurpose them slightly with different art direction. <laughs> so we had <laughs> Jim had done production design on a film called Battle Beyond the Stars, <laughs> and he had taken, uh, Roger had taken those uh, release prints and for Alan Holtzman wanted to make a film. So we had the sets for Galaxy of Terror <laughs> and Alan used those same sets overnight on a 24 hour weekend to shoot 10 minutes of the film, which I volunteered to be part of. I mean, they paid me, but, <laughs> and I was doing uh, some visual effects at the time. What they did was they took the release prints from Battle Beyond the Stars that had all kinds of spaceships and stuff Roger had already paid for, <laughs> and made them into loops and projected them with a projector on a, on a piece of plexiglass with uh, just basically with you know 206, which is tracing paper mm -hmm. uh, on the back, like a screen, and the projection would hit the screen. And from the front, it would look like a computer screen monitoring a spaceship attack mm -hmm. from a glass film. Mm -hmm. So the actors would just watch this and they would rehearse like this and they would shoot like back like this, like they were firing back in synchronization with the loop that was being played. Mm -hmm. And this is how, and then if there was a warning sign on a monitor, it was just a slide mm -hmm. sitting in a slide projector and said, warning, we just put a card in front of it and pulled it back and forth like this. And that was flashing warning. Mm -hmm. And we had four or five people doing that and shot for 24 hours and Alan got the green light to make his film. And that's how he got Forbidden World made. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this would happen all the time in New World. It was a normal thing. Mm -hmm. So it was very exciting because you weren't sure what film you're working on from one day to the next at times. And, uh, and it was really fun to see the same set become three or four different movies. Huh, so, uh, we're doing a lot of that with Space Command right we now. Are. We are. We are. Concepts, you know. Huh. So why don't you give us like a typical week working on Space Command? Like, let us be your the fly on the wall. Walk us through what your what wow. your is like, what your week is like, how okay. many tasks you might be involved in, how many people you're working with, all that stuff. Sure. Okay. So it depends on if we're shooting or not. Right now we're not shooting. We're prepping. Mm -hmm. So the prep crew, I have. Well, here's the the hats I'm wearing. I'm in charge of physical production building the physical studio. Mm -hmm. I am co co not co-production designing exactly, but I'm building a lot of the sets myself with, with yes. sketches and patterns of my own. <laughs> it's like I'm working with Eric Rodriguez doing that. That's three. <laughs> then I've also got, I'm also the construction foreman. So we don't have anyone doing that. That's just that part of it. Then I'm also in charge of all the crowdfunding fulfillment for five campaigns, mm -hmm. of which have to be sent physically. And we're really getting close to being finished with that, thankfully, after all this time. <laughs> I've also got visual effects. 920 visual effects shots for episode two and i'm yeah. supervising and producing that too mm -hmm. so those six different areas i will wake up in the morning uh, at like eight o'clock with ideas in my head of what to do for the day and start dictating them into my phone yes i've got an assistant my old assistant ines is in the dominican republic now so mm -hmm. i've got her doing remote things and i've got another assistant named Bita, and she's here in town doing the physical things that, that yes. ines can't do I've got someone in charge of crowdfunding fulfillment. I've got someone in charge of the studio management. And I've got two carpenters building sets. So yes. I have to keep all these people busy. Plus, I've got two visual effects artists that are doing visual effects, too. And most of that's really being handled by Mark and by uh, Dave Edison. But I still have attention on that because mm -hmm. I also have to pay them. Because I'm in charge of the payroll mm -hmm. and the checkbook and Perfect. the petty cash and all the budgets. So every one of those departments needs things. They need to know what they're doing next and a plan that's in place so that we can get things done in a timely manner that's affordable and the enough, enough money to pay for it as we go step by step because we don't have a large amount of cash in account. We have to pay for it as we go, uh, you know, not piecemeal, but, but you know, in stages. Yes. A, a cash flow scenario. So uh, I wake up in the morning thinking of all of that at the same time. Mm -hmm. I make notes to myself. I type them. Uh, with dictation into a note memo or a voice memo, some things. I'll send some to Ines. I'll send some to Peter right away. I'll call Sabrina's doing crowdfunding. Hmm. Uh, and we've got Michelle who's in UK and she's going to be mailing out 
uh, crowdfunding items from UK. So now I have to coordinate that. So what does Sabrina need to know to get Michelle what she needs? Hmm. She needs <laughs> items in a box shipped to her. Well, how does that happen? Where does it get shipped? What's the box? What's hmm. the best way to do it? And those are all things that I have to research with the staff and myself to figure out. Yes. So now I'm like, okay, well, what are the set construction people doing today? Today, they're going to start building flats. Flats are fake walls that can be put up in any configuration to be any set. For example, there's 11 sets in the framing story of episode three that we're about to shoot. And they are interior spaceship uh, operating room, interior spaceship uh, observation room, interior disembarkation point. They're all inside spaceship scenes. Mm -hmm. we're building a set in our studio with a green screen wall and the flats that are involved. And then we just change out the furnishings with the different set pieces we have. And we can do every weekend shoots mm -hmm. That involved these flats. Well, the mm -hmm. flats don't exist yet. So today I was there with a truck and two carpenters, and we bought enough material to make um, to make uh, 19 flats. <laughs> will be set up in two sets, more or less permanently, to be shot once a week. So then I have to get the staff together to prep the shoots, and then the cast and the staff. And mm -hmm. I, did I mention I'm also doing all the Screen Actors Guild contracts and all the actors' contracts too, mm -hmm. and the deal memos. So I get all that set up so they can come and prep on Saturday and shoot on Sunday. We're going to do that for eight weeks. Right. It's all within the COVID limitations, which I also have to know. So I have to learn what that is. And <laughs> who do we have to have on the set? And what about the mass? And what about the COVID test? And every three days we have to COVID test. Right. So we've got a, a friend of ours from the table, James Gineer, who just finished the very first feature film ever completed under the COVID restrictions wow. in Texas during a big spike. Wow. And you've got all kinds of stories to tell. Well, I've been on the pulse of that the whole way because I'm helping him do little visual effects around the edges as kind of a favor. Mm -hmm. So now I've got access to all the information that he's had to be able to make that happen. So I can apply that to Space Command. So now I know that we have to have masks on and we have to have COVID tests every three days and, and SAG will go for it. Yes. So I say, okay, good. So I have to organize that too. So I have to put someone in charge of that. Mm -hmm. So who feeds these people? I do. Mm -hmm. Who does the crab services? I arrange it. Well, there who you go. pays for all the bills for all these different things? Who pays for their gas if they're volunteering? We have one volunteer that used to come from Tijuana. <laughs> he would come up on a train. He's American. He'd come up yeah. on a train. And he brought a, a big plastic uh, water container with the top cut off full of his tools <laughs> on the train. And I would give him 60 bucks for the train fare. And he would volunteer. And we'd feed him. And he'd work all day. And he would go home. And he was a really great carpenter. <laughs> so if you're part of the table and you put the word out there along these lines, you can get all sorts of interesting things to happen. Yes. I've got another seven or eight people that do scanning of items for, 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 for uh, um, fulfillment. Right. You know, like uh, Mark has a scrapbook of Star Trek uh, clips, two scrapbooks. So I scanned all those pages and then I was filming him record, uh, saying what they were so I could put them into captions into uh, PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wait a second, we film with two cameras. This could be another perk. Yes. So we have a video of Mark reminiscing about a scrapbook. Could we cut the scrapbook pages into it? It's now a second perk. Two yeah. for the price of like one and a half. Mm -hmm. you know, so we're always thinking of things like this for the future, what might happen for the next campaign or what's interesting to people to follow Space Command with. So I'm in charge of that too. Yeah. <laughs> so this is all in my mind every day. Uh -huh. So today I got them going on the, I went to Lowe's. I helped them buy the materials to build the flats. I got the crowdfunding fulfillment, getting lists together and, and boxes together to ship to UK. I got two people on uh, long distance to figure out about like what's the what's the situation with um, with the uh, um, what am I thinking of? Not just the postage, but the customs. Yes. You know, and how do we tell them what yeah. these things are and yeah. are being resold, which they're not, and right. make sure that we don't get caught about that because it's not what we're doing. And right. and so I have to be behind that and figuring out what all the research is needed for that too. So this is all just today. Yeah. <laughs> I do this every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then there's the part of where Mark calls me and throws a monkey wrench in the works every hour or two or five. And there's a brand new idea, a new crazy thing. The one that I thought that was the craziest I heard in a long time was we were going to build a futuristic car. Yes. <laughs> so great. Where's that in the script? Oh, it's in, it's in, the, it's in the script. What script? Oh, it's in uh, Great Solar War. Great Solar War is episode five and six. <laughs> we're not done shooting episode three yet. Yes. So it's like, okay, futuristic car. Next thing I know, he's got a guy doing it. Yeah, and He's got the car and he's got a design. And I met with him on Friday and he's going to be making two of them now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we can use one that's shooting in, in two months. We can use one that's shooting next year or whatever. Yeah. So this is, you know, Mark's world of, of uh, keeping all of his ideas and the balls uh, in the air, the plates in the air, 
uh, while I'm trying to get other things actually done to make yes. these things happen as well. Yeah. Know? Well, it was also fun because another one of my crazy ideas was doing an episode of Space Command during the pandemic that the actors yeah. would go on cameras. We'll just and, throw that uh, in. Yeah. So the fun, the fun part was when you called me and you had an idea for a, a, a scene that would be, that would reprise the character we'd established for you in the first episode. Well, and I that, asked for a scene. I said, you got to have a scene with me in it. And you're thinking <laughs> about what that would be. And then later I said, you got to have the dogs in this somehow because the dogs <laughs> are too precious. And Mark says, aha, that's what it'll be. Yes. Because yeah, the dogs yeah. love me. And it's great. It's great. It's a oh. great scene. If, for those who haven't seen it, immediately go and watch it on, in Ripple Effect. It's terrific. And, uh, and, and you're definitely the Olivier of, do of dog actors. So, yes, but, that's me. <laughs> but, the, um, but, the, but then, and then you had to find a, a costume for yourself to wear and all these things. And, I so mean, the, the costume was fun because Mark has costumes in his garage that we've kept there because the access is easier for us to do things like this where we can ship a costume to someone in Atlanta and they can shoot a COVID episode with a costume we have in this garage. Yes. So we have to dig around for it and find it. So I was doing that in a box of costumes that had been donated to us from another film. Mm -hmm. We didn't even know what they were. And I found this loud magenta and yellow kimono. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's kind of cool. Maybe the guy's an old queen and he's just sitting around his house with his dogs and exactly. he's got this kimono, right? So then I said, right. well, the kimono wasn't enough. So I went online and I bought a bright red pirate shirt with a big <laughs> ruffled collar that went out like this. Yeah. Put the kimono around. Yeah. And it was like ten dollars, and right. that was, the entire cost of my wardrobe was ten bucks, and the dog <laughs> loved it, and it was it looks crazy and fun. So yeah, it really works. And but see, this is the fun thing, and you know, you and I are both um, uh, historians of science fiction. We love and 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 particularly well, film. You're a historian. Of historians, historians. I'm of a fan. Yeah. Right. But, but we both have a knowledge, a great knowledge of cinema. And uh, and so when, when you talk about all these things you're doing, all these hats you're wearing, it really harkens back to the early days of cinema with people like Melies or D.W. Griffith, where everyone, you know, was doing many, many tasks. And it was sort of like they were making it up as they went along. Yeah. And uh, so so you and I have both worked in the studio system. But the, but what we're doing now is very much more akin to the core, the, core, the Roger Corman uh, model or the yeah. early days of cinema when, you know, Chaplin would hear that there were some uh, soapbox derby races down in Venice and he'd, he'd put on the mustache yeah. and the derby hat and off he'd go, you know, to get yeah. production quality with this thing that was actually happening uh, uh, separate from him, you know. You and, remind me of this brilliant this film that I saw, a silent film comedy that was done by Max Sennett Studios. Mm -hmm. And they, there's this incredible chase where the, the bad guy is just intent on killing this, just he's going to capture this good guy. There's no way he's going to get away. Mm -hmm. so they, what they did was they found out that the lake in Echo Park was being drained. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they shot a scene with the lake full and the good guy is escaping. No, the bad guy is escaping on the lake <laughs> in his boat. And then it shows the good guy have an idea and he turns his crank and water starts pouring out of the crank and it cuts back to the lake and it's empty. <laughs> it's been drained in yeah. two seconds. And yep. the boat is stuck in the mud. So he tries to run out in the mud, which he can't do. He can barely walk in the mud and the guy can't get out of the boat. And they're trying, it's this most slow motion chase you've ever seen. It's hysterical. That's, but that's great. So, and again, yeah. Well, mm. so we're using the same kind of inventiveness in what we're doing. And uh, because the trick, the, the moment you change the paradigm from it's impossible to how do we do it? You know, we, right from we, we can't do it to how do we do it? Then you come up with solutions. And and that's the real fun of it. And uh, so you find the people who are willing to be as uh, crazy as you are, you know, and that's, uh, yeah. you know, that's how it works. So, yeah. uh, you know, but so, so you're running this crazy studio, you're doing all of these things and we're both working to keep the machine going and make more space come in and get it to the fans. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the one thing that's true of working with me is you never know what you're going to end up doing. And so, <laughs> you know, that's true. So, but so like amongst your memories of working on Space Command these last few years, like what are some of the high points? Like if someone said to you, what have you enjoyed the most? What's been the coolest thing? Well, just the other day, I was able to see these, these new walls of the interior of the alien spaceship up in the studio, yeah. standing, freestanding with each other for the first time. One of them painted, painted to its completion, the other three almost complete. And there was something really exciting about that that was very fun. And every time I show a picture of them, should I show them a picture? Sure, sure. Every time I show a picture to people about this, even the people that have worked on it, even Mark and Elaine, mm. or, you know, they're, they're not that tough a crowd, frankly. But at the same time, they're very discerning that it's something that is really, <laughs> um, it's really fun to see the results of. 
Mm. Mm. Wow, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting there. That's really cool. That's, that's four cool. of the walls, and there's 12 of these things. They look like sort of bizarre Easter Island alien heads. Right, and they'll all be connected up, and they'll be illuminated, and there'll be smoke and all sorts of stuff. So it's going to yeah, be this one on the left has got the red coloring on it that goes on the top of the rest of the wall, which the yeah. others don't have yet. Yeah. And, it's and we got a, an actress who's, that's one of them by themselves with a vein. Mm. That one turned wow. out pretty well. That's cool. It's black. You can't tell from this video, but yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a woman named Maeve who's an actress and a writer, and she also does those wonderful, you know, that, that aerial dancing with the ribbons? And yes. Pull up and down the ribbons? Yes. She does that, the silver wow. ribbons. <laughs> and she's an art director, and <laughs> she's got a knack for this like you can't believe. So I gave her that task, and she puts the red as the final touch on that, and it's just, wow. it's really beautiful. That's so cool. that's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, another one was, I got to work with James Hong. Huh. Yeah. James Hong of Blade Runner fame, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. <clears throat> and he was really fun. I I was I was uh, James Hong and and believe it or not, Bill Murray have something in common. They don't have representation. <laughs> they have a phone number. <laughs> so you actually call and James Hong answers the phone. <laughs> and then you make a deal with him directly and he tells you what the terms are and he tells you what the situation is and you agree or you don't. Uh -huh. So we did, we could afford it, it was fine, it was great. So he comes down. So he's sitting there with me on a little video that I have. <clears throat> And we're talking about this now, exciting his friend to be there with me. He's in costume. And I said, I said, eyes, I did your eyes. <laughs> I did the voice like him. And, uh -huh. he looked at me and he goes, he goes, I just do eyes. And he looks right at me and he says, you have terrible eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of the highlights of my career. Yeah. This is a video from Blade Runner of James Hong. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, but what, what, I worked with really fun actors. I get to work with Ferran Tahir, who's just a dream. He's such a wonderful guy. And I got to write with Mira Furlan in the car on the way to Comic-Con for three hours and have talks with her. And that was so much fun. And mm -hmm. Bob Picardo and, and uh, you know, I got to work with Doug Jones. And mm -hmm. and these are like, you know, I'm big fans of theirs. Yeah. And to be able to have them, you know, in person and work with them has been really fun. Yeah. And, uh, and I just, I don't know, other things. I loved, um, I have to think of something else that I really had to put my finger on these cave wall sets that have been done recently have been lots of fun i have a lot of attention on that yes um oh i have put a green screen in the studio that was uh, really cool ah, yeah, big yeah. deal right you paint the wall green it's not that simple <laughs> it can't have any flaws it can't have any shadows or, or wrinkles it has to be absolutely perfect so mm -hmm. i got a gaffer eric kionis he came down with his light meter and we we lit the thing and and doug uh, uh hemsing was uh doing all the the painting and stuff and <laughs> And he's a professional carpenter. It took him forever. He hand sanded the wall, and it's really you know carefully done. And we can do perfect green screens that uh, Dave Edison will be happy to have. And from yes. it, and we can do all kinds of things in the studio now. We can do many scenes in the studio with with uh, not that much of an overhead, relatively speaking. That's great. And uh, and it's cool too because the studio has other facility rooms available that are possibly vacant at one time or another. Mm -hmm. We go into them for a week or two, or even a few days at times, and expand into them in, in a much larger spaces than contract back into the ones we have. So it's very cost affordable. It's very, um, it's it's very Roger Corman. It's very Hammond Lumber. You know, yes, the way it's set up right now, it really is. Now that I think of it, yeah. So and the other part, the other part I, that I, I love the designs. I love yes. seeing designs that happen. I love Mark's got such a an eye for design, and Eric Rodriguez is such a beautiful illustrator. And uh, he's got these creatures coming that are pretty intense, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And Elaine, Elaine, of all people, you would think, see, Elaine, oh, she must be the one that writes the romantic scenes and the nice scenes and all that. No, it's not the case at all. She writes the violent action scenes, yes. and they're really cool. You know, they're very yeah. good stuff, you know. Yeah. And Mark ends up running romantic scenes, which is interesting. <laughs> but it, uh, it off. it's it fun to see a new scene come along the line. And it's yeah. fun to see Barbara Bain do a scene. You know, out of the blue, and and it's I got to go to, um, you know, Stephen Galloway's house, and mm -hmm. he's a he's a kind of a famous BBC reporter, and I got to go to his place. It turns out he lives in the the area that the, the, the apartment complex that they shot uh, Mulholland Drive scenes in. Wow, you know, David yeah. Lynch's film. So that was like in part of Hollywood history too, and that's just you know all of it's fun for me. That's great. That's great. Yeah, and again, we're both uh, having the, the joy of working with our heroes, and also. Just kind of putting on a show, you know, putting on a show and yeah. make this happen. And uh, no, it's 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 great fun. And uh, you know, it's just um, can't wait to see where where we 
go from here. I mean, it's uh, we're, we're I mean, the funny thing is when the pandemic hit, we didn't slow down. We sped up, you know, so. Yeah. It was, you oh, know. well, you didn't, you mentioned, uh, you didn't mention a key little thing. Mm-hmm. This, uh, this little episode that we're supposed to do 20, 30 minutes mm-hmm. turns out to be almost two hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we have to do all the posts, which includes music, sound design, and a mix. Yeah. Oh, and all the color correction. I do the color correction too. I didn't mention that. <laughs> and I supervise all the posts. That's another thing. So the post has to be done in this thing too. Oh yeah, we have to do that. Oh no, Mark, hang on a second. All the post for two <laughs> hours. Okay. That you can't speed up. That's not, you know, you just send someone a script to their house. It's, yeah. You've got to do it for real. Right. And, and then it has to be premiered on the very first ever online convention. Yay. For Space <laughs> Command. And we succeeded. And, oh, also, we should also launch the Kickstarter campaign on the same day. Yes. <laughs> so all three of those things happened had to drop on the same day. And who's yeah. the producer of them all? I am. Hey. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. And, and oh, it's again, lots of fun. Yeah, because again, you know, the lovely thing is that we don't ask to, have to ask permission. We just do it. And there's yeah. a great quality. You know, when you when you look at the output of someone like D.W. Griffith or Melies or even Corman, really, but but the early guys, particularly, the it's astonishing how much they made. How much, yeah. you know, they just were, you know, off and running. And um, and I love that spirit, you know, because it, for all of us who've worked in the studio uh, system you know that so much of it is hurry up and wait. And so many movies don't get made. So many TV shows never see the light of day. Uh, you know, so it's really lovely where we're actually doing it. I mean, we've, you know, we're, we have an audience now and we have, you know, ways to interact with them and it's fun. And they're, they're financing us at this point, which is great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so here's a, here's a, so we, we've kind of been talking for a little while. So here's, here's another thing, David. So let's say for a moment that we've got, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people watching this, interview ultimately in Kathmandu and, you know, uh, the, the Needles, California or wherever. I'm and, a big draw Needles, actually. You know, so, so, so if you wanted to, because you're the guy who goes out and gets the, the volunteers and gets the, the guys working for, for a reasonable salary and all of that. And uh, so if you were going to make your pitch to, to anybody anywhere in the world about what's great about being part of Space Command and how they might get in touch with you and how might they might be part of the dream in addition, of course, to contributing our, to our Kickstarter campaign or buying Space Command shares. You're the, you're the nuts and bolts guy where they roll up their sleeves and they, they grab a hammer and a saw and off they go. But So what would your pitch be to anyone listening to this, anyone watching this? Well, it's interesting because today we've got Eric Fetterman working with us who comes when he can and he's a, a vet which I, and I love vets. I have a number of veterans that I've worked with. It's a lot of fun to do that. And I love helping them back. You know, they've given so much to us and he's come and he's volunteered and he's painting and he's having a great time. He built something one day, he did something else a different day. So the, the veterans uh, come and so do uh, other volunteers of different kinds. There are people that come and, and get paid jobs that are very, very small paid jobs because it's during the COVID. You know, we can do our social distancing and we have mass and the whole thing. It's all done very carefully and, and very uh, correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, and they get a small salary out of that. And it's fun for them because they either have nothing else to do or they want to make a little money around the edges. Mm-hmm. And people come and volunteer because they love science fiction or they love Mark and Elaine. Mm-hmm. Or they want to help with Space Command directly. Um, some people come because they want to benefit from other ways. Like they can, like if you sit around Mark long enough, he'll put you in the show. You know, people when they say how can i be in space game and i say that's what you do you come to the table or you come to the set yes and you volunteer around mark long enough and they'll write you a scene yes you go, yeah but how can i be in space game i said no you understand i'm not joking about yes. that <laughs> you know, he wrote a scene one day for three people with james hong and they were named judith howard and stewart and that's yes. because he was sitting next to judith howard and stewart yes <laughs> while he was writing the scene at the table yes so, uh, you can come and be involved and benefit out of it yourself and also contribute in as much as you want to or as little as you want to. Yeah. Come and, uh, someone came the other day for two hours. Wow. And because of him, I uh, Koshik, he came and painted for two hours. And because of that, we finished that day's target of getting all those set pieces painted black. <laughs> and today they're finishing the last one. So I have every single one of them painted black and half of them will be painted red. <laughs> By the end of the day tomorrow, they'll all be red and they'll be ready to put lights inside. Cool. That's going to be cool. really exciting. So, you know, you can come and be part of that. You can be mm-hmm. part of something that's being built. Wow. It's not something in place that's ongoing. This is developing as we speak. Yeah. Uh, I, I ask people their opinions about things all the time. I say, well, how, what do you think about this? Hey, do you have any ideas here? Do you have any suggestions? 
Mm -hmm. Half the time they come up with something that's better than my idea. Yeah. Sometimes it's more interesting and sometimes it's even cheaper. That's unusual because I'm pretty expert at that now. Yeah. But yeah, I get people having different ideas all the time that are better. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. you can come and be a part of that. I'm, I particularly, when I do the table interviews, I say I'm a filmmaker, a teacher, and a human rights activist. So the mm -hmm. teacher part of it is that I love helping people become educated. Mm -hmm. And I love helping people move up in their careers from one to another. Like, you know, my assistant, uh, Vita, is uh, an actress and a comic, and she wants to make her own product someday. So, well, mm -hmm. how about today? Yes. Why is there someday? How about make your own product now? Well, she didn't know much about producing, and she had a, a fear of, of numbers, mm -hmm. you know, of mm -hmm. financial numbers especially. I said, okay, well, first thing is I'm going to put you in charge of petty cash. Uh, she had this horrified look on her face so now she's a whiz at petty cash and i don't even have to check her work because it's perfect that's great so she's now building up into being a coordinator well a coordinator is the wagon wheel hub of the entire shoot hmm. you have to have responsibility to be able to do anything for anyone mm -hmm. you know, now she's developing into being a producer uh -huh. and uh my, Ines, my old assistant came to me as a as a young producer now she's producing her own tv series in dominican republic hmm. i've got many examples you know people that have started in jobs and moved up in their careers. And mm -hmm. we had a vet working with us named Xavier and he came mm -hmm. to volunteer and I thought he was a, he's a very smart person. He's very meticulous and calm. Mm -hmm. So I thought, he might be a good camera assistant. Mm -hmm. He threw around a lot of money spent on these cameras, millions of dollars in some cases, one camera lens can be $20,000. Mm -hmm. Wow. So who do you put in response, responsible for assisting a camera assistant to help with that kind of work? Yeah. And he took to it like a duck to water. He became a second camera assistant. And the next thing you know, he's uh, at, at our encouragement going to LA film school. Now he's a director. Yeah, that's so great. that's what I like doing. So yeah. if you want to have an improvement in your career or yeah. start a career, this is a good place to do it. Yeah. And, and also we should mention, we should also add that if one is not in, in LA, we're working with people long distance. You mentioned uh, Inez, who's in the Dominican Republic now. Yeah. We, we, but if someone wants to make costumes or spacesuits or weapons, you know, yep, rake use, any of that stuff, or, <clears throat> or, or handle some of the minutia, as you were saying, because we have some of the fulfillment going off to the UK to then yeah. it's, it's throughout Europe. And um, so people can be part of this, uh, you know, wherever they are in the yeah. world, which is really cool, really, really fun. We have people doing stuff in Atlanta. We have people doing stuff in, in Florida, uh, several New Yorkers. I've got a couple UK people, um, <laughs> Portugal at one point. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it varies. And we've got people who came from other countries like Canadians and, and Mexicans, mm -hmm. several Mexicans, a few Central Americans. Uh, our head of fulfillment right now mm -hmm. is from Bolivia. Wow. And I've heard wow. great stories about her growing up in the center of mountains, surrounded by mountains. Driving mm. motorcycles and, and and quads. So guess what she does with us when we need it? She <laughs> drives the truck. <laughs> this twenty five year old beautiful young actress in there grabbing the truck and just going for it. You know, I could just send her off to rent a truck and pick up a bunch of things and come back and it's no problem. So that's great. Yeah, you know yep. that, that stuff is lots of fun. All different countries, many different languages, different cultures. It it doesn't really matter, you know. Wow, that's great. Well, I think we've, we've covered a lot of ground in this conversation, David, and certainly uh, now when people see your name on the uh, on the show, they'll know who that is. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure that you'll be hearing from them. Now, so if, if people want to reach you through volunteer to offer their services, what's the best way to get to you? Uh, email me is the best, Dave Films, D-A-V-E-F-I-L-M-S at hotmail.com. Great. And uh, and I'll get back to you and put you in the in the pipeline. You wow. Can get that's studio to help out or help out remotely. Uh, we had someone build a spacesuit and send it to us. Yes. I mean, this is sort of thing happens all the time with this film, you know, yeah. this show, TV show. Yeah. Well, TV show. <laughs> <laughs> so in conclusion, is there any, anything you want to say to in, in, as, your, as your final uh, bit of wisdom? Well, the, the independent sense of the film industry, uh, as opposed to the studios, and believe me, the studios are awesome. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's great to be in a studio world with, you know, 10 grand in petty cash on you to spend however you need it kind of thing. <laughs> yes. Solve problems when you have to instantly because you've got to keep the machine going. It's a different kind of thinking and mindset. Yes. And you get films like, you know, Titanic that way to yeah. throw it off to Jim Cameron, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't do Titanic without a major, couple major studios putting up a lot of money. Right. On the other hand, on the independent side of things, we are still living and thriving in an independent world. 
James film is an independent film made for a very small amount of money. Got an entire feature done in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. We have a studio. We can shoot in green screen and sets. And I'm very close to having a soundstage type environment that will mm -hmm. allow us sync sound. So we can shoot any size scenes up to a couple of sets mm -hmm. or maybe a, a bar, restaurant, you know, uh, airport lounge, anything along those lines, hospital mm -hmm. rooms, anything that you would find it that you would have to go to a location and pay a fortune or move a crew to, we can do them all in the studios we have now. Mm -hmm. So with that said, there's no limitation to what your imagination could bring. Mm -hmm. And you've got these, these Mandalorian scenarios where these LED walls and stuff. So, well, how much of that could we do with a green screen? Mm -hmm. We have a green screen there, park there anytime we need it. If you just need mm -hmm. to stick something in the background, we put it in front of that. Wow. So it's, it's like a simple thing now. So now if you're an independent filmmaker or TV maker, whatever you say, okay, well, how could I make this imagination I have exist on screen on a small screen or a large screen and this is the clever way that you do that without putting you know money into a lumber yard mm. you know which mm -hmm. is kind of what we're doing it's yeah. a there are large warehouse spaces that we're making into a studio mm. so you can become involved with us or do your own thing because yeah. that is still possible and still thriving in uh you know in this post um you know the guys that really did this recently robert rodriguez mm -hmm. and and uh, John Favreau, mm -hmm. you know, the Clerks era, era the, 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 mm -hmm. the uh, well, Tarantino never quite went that low budget, but Reservoir mm -hmm. Dogs was a low budget film. Yeah. It was contained and it was minimal and it was crafted to be in an environment that he could manage. Yes. And that's what we're doing. Yes. Mark doesn't think that way, of course. <clears throat> Mark <laughs> wants the full hit Monty, you know, mm -hmm. to be every time. Yes. So we have to find a way to take the minimal means we have and make it into what his imagination uh, puts out there. And that's its own set of challenges too. But we're, you know, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're doing it. So, um, so I think it's been a great conversation, David. I'm really glad to, uh, to get, let the, uh, the larger uh, uh, common brain, the, the, the mass brain out there in the, in the world uh, get to know you. And uh, <laughs> sure it's, uh, it's going to be a, uh, continuing adventure and i'm very glad to have you aboard the team and thanks for all the uh, above and beyond that you do every single day okay you're welcome okay thank you we'll all talk right, to bye you everyone bye